10. 2000. Describe the uh, the original jewelry store and how it was located next to the other buildings. Well, in this building, was, it was a two-story building. It was called the Whitby Family Building. And uh, Whitby was a physician who practiced ophthalmology. And there was a stairway. He, his office was on the second floor, and there was a stairway leading up to second floor. That stairway probably was 10 to 12 feet wide and my father's jewelry store was to the right of that as you face the building but it extended underneath the inside of it extended underneath the jewelry store and it was quite the location was quite deep and there was a lot of space in the back which was not used for retail trade, and I would get to play with the tools there when I was a little kid. And my father had some optical grinding equipment, which I never could figure out how to work it when I was a kid. However, he, my mother still had it when I became an optometrist, and it was so passe that I couldn't possibly use it. But uh, we kept it all those years. And uh, so, uh, I don't know if you can visualize something like that, but uh, it works of that nature. Uh, the Owl Drug Store was on the corner uh, of this building, that looked, this old building that we're talking about now. And at the present time, it is now across the street. And this is a Bank of America bank, I believe, which is quite different than what was here in those days. Uh, <coughs> The one thing that's common, the alley was there, and it is still there. And, but just about everything has changed, but you, when you realize that 1909, that was many, 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 many years ago, and that's when he started. And I have records of Menachee, clippings from Menachee, uh, Daily World, stating that he had a place of business at that time. I don't think I have any more to say about this particular rotation. We shall go to the next one.
close to your face. Can't see you. There you go. This is the odd home in which I was born. Let's just walk around and you do um Don't worry so much about your your uh, your uh, what you're saying. Talk to me, tell me about the place. I'll just tape, you just have the recorder on and just tell me about the place. Alright, as much as I can. Uh-huh. Alright. Because all you gotta do is make sure the only thing you gotta do is make sure that this can hear you. But just tell me about the place. Alright. Very good. Let's go in the back. Okay. Go ahead and record and talk while we walk. Oh, oh. you're just playing right now. Mm -hmm. You just had to play. Oh. You gotta hit the record. Alright. I'm not too good at not good mm -hmm. and check a few things. So I can see that there is something that we didn't have when I was here. <laughs> we also didn't have gas. We had a wood kitchen stove from which I started the fire. And I would have thought that heated most of the house. But uh, this house did get a lot of together because this is a mess. Uh, another type of, this is my special shape. There it is. Is that what you remember? Well, I can't remember for sure. I thought we had shapes on it because I've seen this house so long. Right. Well. by it. That might just be the undercoating of what they, they may have had a single cedar on top of that. It looks like siding. Rock leaves siding. So I think that probably was the original. And if you look underneath that porch, which is more painted, that's, that's the original siding. That's the original siding under there? Uh, and apparently we didn't paint it because that was never been painted. But, uh, well, that probably was covered up with more shake or, or shingle. Possibility, but I don't know for sure. This is maintained the way it is very well. How about this basement door? I can't remember. That's not really. Now you left when you were three, yeah. so. Uh, that does look like a basement door, right? And uh, put in two streets. One was named Nelson Avenue, still named that. <clears throat> and the other one was named. Uh, Elliott Avenue, and it's now next to the longest street in the city of Past or city of Wenatchee. I mentioned Pasco because I live in Pasco now, and have since 19. Saying than we okay. do. Okay. Um, I'm Michelle Craven, and I rent this house from Hank Dole, and it's actually a business and a home now. It's um, I'm a massage practitioner. I'm a single mom with two kids, and we live in the back half of the house, and our business is in the front. And uh, I've been here about a year. Before that, it was a 
hair salon and tanning salon, um, tanning salon for about four or five years. And before then, I'm not quite sure what happened. Some of them besides that. Some of them besides that, yes. but um, for about four or five years, it was a tanning salon and hair salon. And, and just this last year, it's been my business. Oh, well, that's good. It's been, but it's been great. I'm this area lucky is zone commercial no doubt. It's zone commercial now. Yeah, uh -huh. it is zone commercial now. So, but probably much different than when you were living here. Well. Uh, not quite. The buildings are still here. They aren't maintained quite as well as they used to be. No, uh -uh. And uh, but uh, pretty much, pretty much, it's the same as it was then. Really? Uh, yes. But it's gone commercial, and uh -huh. the streets uh, it used to be two way of course. <laughs> and uh, it's just it's gone commercial and, and more like uh, what you'd expect. Uh -huh. As it's progress just, happens. Uh, as progress yeah. happens. That's right. It's actually a really nice school. A little drafty in the winter, but yes. <laughs> it probably is drafty I, back then too. We're in a different position now than we used to be. Uh, we have uh, you know, we're in the land development business oh, in wow. Pasco, and we have we working with manufactured homes. Uh -huh. We uh, are in the process of developing. Uh, one new block now that has 16 locations on oh, it. Oh, cool. And it's a lot of fun, but we've already done it three times before. Just get a little old hat here. We need to find something else for you to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're to have 25 rentals, all oh, manufactured my. homes. So yeah. we kind of know what is going That's on down here. But uh, we always manage it my home. And, uh, I it's, you know, I was not raised mm -hmm. here. I was born in Texas and raised in Nebraska, and I moved out here, and I call when I I've been mm -hmm. here about 13, 14 years, and it's the best place. I've been. And the changes I've seen in 14 years have been amazing. So <laughs> yes. it's been pretty awesome. Well, it's been should have known. Did they come on like a ship? Yes, that's the only way they could get here. They get here at that time. Well, I guess it would be. I'm not sure that they they met in Norway. I don't think so. I think they met in Chicago. Oh wow. And they were and they were somewhere around 23 years old. But anyway, my father proposed to her and she said, no, I will marry you when you have a thousand dollars. Oh, wow. And so he got on the train and somehow he got to Wenatchee and he opened up his business. And a year later, he went back to Chicago and he had his thousand dollars. <laughs> he married her then. Oh, how cool. That's awesome. That's really awesome. That's the story, anyway. That's the story about your uh -huh. mom. Yeah, that's cool. Do yeah. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one brother and we have, his name is Elliot, and there is an Elliot Avenue. And oh, yeah. Uh, I know where Elliot Avenue is. I used to live on the street in Pasco. Yeah. Or I mean, in Wenatchee. Yeah. And I talked to Jim Ajax, who was a city engineer here, uh -huh. uh, was in Pasco before, and he helped us with some of our land development there. Mm -hmm. And so I usually stop and see him, but I'm not sure I'm going to this trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, he told us that Elliott Avenue is along, next to the longest street next to Wenatchee, and they're trying to extend it so it will go down into Wenatchee Avenue because they need another major uh, and they, another, they And then major. we also have another one named Nelson. Oh, oh. My mother, at the age of 46, started land development. She took this, 40, this 10 acre apples we had, uh -huh. pulled, pulled all the trees out, uh -huh. and built shell houses. Well, so you're the one responsible for all the land development around here. No, ah, not all the just apples those and cherries are acres. leaving. Just, I see. just those 10 acres. Oh, okay. And, and then that's right behind the. Uh, uh, junior College, uh -huh. where A.G. Wells' house is. Oh, yeah. I used to play behind him when I was a little kid behind oh, wow. that house when he lived there. That's, and and I never, never did see him there. <laughs> <laughs> did the, has the area changed a lot, do you think? I mean, obviously it's changed since you were born. Oh, yes, it's changed a lot. Uh, the, there used to be apple trees much closer to mm -hmm. the city, and now they're all in houses. Yeah, houses. But as for the its configuration, no, it hasn't changed. Okay. Just a lot more people here than now, they were. Now, but I've heard of a flood that hit Wenatchee that came all the way up um, to the railroad tracks. Were you here at that time? I don't remember that sort of thing because we had the, it must have been prior to the, uh, the uh, dam. Mm -hmm. And that was, makes me a pretty young person. Yeah. I don't remember any flood of that nature, but oh, I wow. used to go swimming in the Wenatchee River and all that kind of stuff when I was a little kid. Oh, uh, would we, you swim in it now? 
I don't know. I haven't been there. <laughs> uh, I think I would. Why? Well, oh, it's cold and, and very dirty. Very well, dirty. Well, well, I'm sorry about that, but it was always very cold, and we made homemade canoes, and we'd go down and play. Oh, really? How yeah. cool! In fact. I almost died in the Wenatchee River. You did? And when I was beginning to swim and I thought I was the better swimmer than I was, I got out in the current and I couldn't handle it. I gulped down the water and I passed out. Ooh. But my brother was there who had muscular dystrophy and somehow or other he got out there. Pulled Must me mean like in. he had angels helping him. Something. He pulled me in and hit me in the stomach and that brought me to. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have died. Well, <laughs> hey, that's one way of getting him back to your brother. <laughs> That's, oh, that's one way to resuscitate yeah, a patient. that's right. That's right. <laughs> but he's gone also. He's gone also. They never well, taught me that one. <laughs> never taught you that one in resuscitation, huh? Well, let's, why don't you tell me about what's, what the area is like here? Um, or what you use, what do you remember? Well, the basic See, situation... So much help. <laughs> I, I, the basic thing that I remember about this area is it's the same as what it is now, but much, much less people and many more orchards. Really? Uh, so there were orchards clear to Miller Street. Oh, wow. And uh, I used to go to Whitman School, which was on, uh, it was on um, Mission Street, and it's long gone now. Mission, oh, yeah. Mission Street's a one-way street and mm -hmm. all that. And I would ride my bicycle along there to go home out to Nelson mm -hmm. uh, Avenue out there. <clears throat> which was a half mile north of, uh, of uh, Miller. Mm -hmm. But mainly the difference is the apple trees came right down to the property line. Wow. And uh, all along uh, Fifth Street in the north, up by Western, mm -hmm. all apple trees. And uh, that's the main yeah, difference. Yeah, those have just seen. started coming out in the last yeah, few years. Yeah, they'll be coming out now also. Last few years, yeah. Uh, but, and of course there's new buildings and taking the tops off of some of them and all that sort of thing. Uh -huh. uh, but basically the city is just the same it's as it was. It's the same uh -huh. structure. So. And of course East Wenatchee has changed tremendously. Oh yeah, frankly, it's Frankly, there wasn't long. anything over there at mm -hmm. the time. That, well, uh, there's no, no way to grow over here anymore. Well, to... when I talked to the city engineer, he says that the growth is, we're full, we can't grow, and that's why East Wenatchee is developing. Uh, yeah. The we've got our capacity in Pasco. Yeah, Wenatchee is pretty yeah. much maxed out. Well, Wenatchee is a beautiful town and a wonderful place to live. And, and, and so I can see why people are coming here. Do you think that, um, as a developer, do you think that the things in this area develop well? As far as uh, economically, the businesses and stuff like that? Well, I'm not in a position to answer that one. I'm going to hedge and take the Fifth Amendment on that <laughs> because to answer a question like that, you have to be here. Mm -hmm. And what, what we did, we developed about 75 acres in Pasco mm -hmm. with, from, uh, from sagebrush, raw sagebrush, to what it is now. And there are over 500 uh, brand new uh, manufactured houses in that area all with beautiful streets and all the facilities. In fact, we're putting in another city block along with another eight blocks of development in the city streets now. That will be the final one for us. We've been doing it for 25 years. And my wife, they had to build a new school there. And my wife was given a commendation for being the citizen most responsible for the building of the new Rigger School. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> and so she, she appreciated that. And she knew that before she died. That's <laughs> Now, you used to live in this house. Yes. And what are some of your fondest memories here? Well, this is when my dad died. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's That's fond, not necessarily not a fond, a fond memory. memory. But I was happy living here, and I walked from here to the high school, doing the school. Now, high the school. high school used to be where? Well, it's not it's, where it is now, is it's it? It's the old high school uh -huh. that I went to. Uh, no, it is not where it is now. I don't know if there's a place, I think they still have an old high school there. But you it know was what on, streets that you swear uh, Well, Arondo, and there's a playground behind Arondo, and it's right in that area. I can't name the mm. streets for you. I bet it's Columbia School now, or somewhere around yeah, there. We're going out there to see, and I can oh, tell cool. you that then, but because my parents also owned the house on Arondo Street. And we, we lived there, and I went to school there for a while. Mm -hmm. After my father sold the apple orchard, mm -hmm. and we moved to that house, which was quite a nice house. Mm -hmm. 
then became ill, and we, we had been renting this one to someone else, mm -hmm. and we moved it there. Mm -hmm. um, he sold his apple orchard on a <laughs> on a crop payment plan. I uh -huh. know you're familiar with that. Uh -huh. Well, the man was not a very good farmer, and he never had uh -huh. any crops. Oh, never, no. Never made him famous. Never made him famous. Until my mother, who was no dumb Norwegian, apparently, she talked him into uh, re-signing the property, and we got it back again. Yeah. And that's when she, she started left in the lodge. That's when she uh, planted it and started it land. And I, I cut down... We pushed all the apple trees over in 10 acres. Wow. And when I was about 14 or something like that, I spent a whole winter cutting those trees, limbs into eight foot lengths. And, oh, uh, wow. and then uh, we sold that. For, for fire? For fire. With well, let's walk around and um, tell me a little bit, because has this building changed a little bit since you were? We, we rebuilt some of it. Oh, you rebuilt some yes. of it? Yes. OK, so you could tell me where some of the original lines were in this place. Uh, you mean electrical lines? No, 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 no. I've seen those electrical lines. <laughs> yes. Those are really pretty hairy. Yes. So I can tell you about a little bit about the sawdust up in the attic. Oh, really? <laughs> we put it in up there. Did you put the sawdust in there? At that time, sawdust was the way you insulated. Mm -hmm. And uh, it made a lot of difference for us. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what, how much it's settled and how much oh, wet it's, it got. Oh, it's very settled and they have Probably regular fiberglass insulation up there now. I just good. was up there the other day working on the air conditioner, uh -huh. so. Well, I'm glad to see that, but that was the best thing we had in those mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And it did make a substantial difference. Uh -huh. We're living in a manufactured home, naturally, uh -huh. and it has six inch walls and six inch insulation. And it is so much superior to houses that don't have that. Now, this house is laid in plaster, isn't it? Yes, I think so. I know, because it's really hard to put a nail in yeah, <laughs> every time I, I try and hang I'm a picture. I'm sure it is. But, so. uh, the, well, <clears throat> the part that was, was the kitchen of the front uh, part unit was a bedroom at one time. Oh, really? And then there was a combination bathroom that you shaped from two sides, and we, we blocked that off and we put the kitchen in. Oh, wow. And uh, it worked out pretty well. And uh -huh. then we enclosed the front porch for, I think, the kitchen. I think that's what it is. Well, it'd be, well let's go this way now. and we'll go through the house and well, I'll show you well, what's going on. Inside, but I well, it's dirty. Oh, we're not recording. <laughs> yeah, well, we're recording out here. Oh. <laughs> my brother used to use the basement bedroom that's down here. Uh huh. Well, see, I thought my landlord put that in. Now, I programmed it. Very good. Now, did you add these two rooms back here? Well, we added this one that I uh -huh. remember. This is the one my brother used, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this is my room. This one was part of the... We had a hallway back here, but uh -huh. this is part of the kitchen that I remember. This is the kitchen part? Oh, look yeah. at this one. This is yeah. definitely not a... I don't know. Well, we didn't have this. A portable one. <laughs> well, you should see the back porch. This was a back porch? Yeah, and this was the kitchen. Really? We sold this to be here. Oh, wow. I remember. Now it's a computer room. I don't know. Good. <laughs> That's what I do. Make use of it. Yeah. This was kitchen, and that was where the sink was underneath that window. You know what? There's still pipes there. Yeah. Okay. There's still pipes there because they used to have the hair salon had a, a, a sink for washing hair back here. Yeah. Well, it's it's bound it changes. Oh yeah. This, this is configuration my father driving on the right here. Oh. The door here. No, actually, we just, when I moved in here, we framed that, it, it was already framed and we just closed it up so that I could keep the office in the house. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, that, that, this was the dining room and that was the living room, originally. Originally. Uh-huh. And then the bathroom is, we put in this long metal bathroom in here. Oh, this one in here? Yeah. It's actually been divided since well, you put it in. Well, they've changed it, yes. Yeah, they've changed it they're and they've... There's a sink there, I think, something like yeah. Well, and uh, the landlord, the last time he was here, when he was here, he divided this um, in here. There's this, this this hall. This is the bathroom, wasn't it? This is the bathroom. It still is. But on this other side, you have to photograph this other side. This is a wall, and the other bathroom is only 24 inches wide. Oh, that's a And it's really just a toilet. Room. I can't remember where the bathroom was. <laughs> oh, this, this was this was the bathroom some way, and this was the bathroom for that. If I remember oh, that. interesting. Because Originally, this is the bathroom and the bedroom door and there, and the bedroom door and there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So well, this is probably the original toilet. Um, that one or the other one is one of the two. I know one of them is pretty old. I mean, this was my mother's bedroom again. This is like we rented this bedroom. You rented this because this has got a second door to it. Yeah, that, and they would come. We rented my mother rented this, but where was she sleeping? I can't remember. Hmm. Actually, when we moved in here, we built this in on. And it's the second oh, massage yeah, room. That's, that's different. And then, um, so is this the back porch that you enclosed, or is it the front other front porch? The front did. porch, I mean. Front, yes, it is. So this is the front porch that you enclosed. Uh -huh. So what was this? Just this was a kitchen. Uh huh. And the bathroom went off. Turn <laughs> The bathroom went off of that kitchen, that's what I remember. You know what, if the bathroom there is only about 24 inches wide. Right. They, uh, when they closed they sealed it off. Seems to me it had a bigger, bigger one than that. Well, it's, it's not big now. We call it the, uh, he called it the employee health plan. The employee what? Health plan. <laughs> health plan. Yeah, you couldn't get too wide. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's literally a water closet. It is literally a water closet. Uh, I remember it as being wider. Oh, I'm sure it was probably much uh, wider. Um, you were thinner. But, <laughs> be, but this seems normal to me always. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. Well, how cool. It must have left to the front porch. Was it closed in? No. It wasn't closed it in. It was open. Is so all around? whoever's done this to it has made another change. Wow. Well, you've made a, an efficient uh, building out of it. I, yeah, I. when you have to, when you have two kids, you want to live. <laughs> sure. You, you, that, you think up the innovations. Uh-huh. And that sign wasn't there, of course. No, the billboard was not there. No. But otherwise, it, this house looks much neater than it did the last time I drove by. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's been quite a while since we I've try and keep it neat. Well, that's important. Oh yeah, uh, very much so. It shows your uh, when we when we did this, and uh, it, uh, it it just changed with every business that comes mm -hmm. into this area. Really oh cool. yeah, it's a really nice area. Um, I know that when I first moved here, I had a lot of people concerned because it was towards the south end, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, we have a security line in the back. You know, just there used to be an old barn back there, and my mother had her model, the 1930 model A car park there. Oh, wow. And I used to drive that to work because I didn't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> she wow. sold it for $50. She made it. Oh. We're several thousand today. Oh, but yeah. That was a long time ago. 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 Well, uh, I appreciate you uh, showing us the home. Not at all. And uh, it's bringing back memories. It's, it's pretty interesting to, to go back yes, in time. It is. You weren't expecting this, now were you? Well, I knew there was going to be alterations because I'd driven by before uh -huh. and I'd driven in the alley. All right. Well, I was saying she wasn't expecting no, I us. Wasn't expecting oh, this. No, <laughs> I'm like, who's coming in? <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, this is pretty interesting because I always wondered who was here and, mm -hmm. and, um, I have, have an option to buy this place and I've decided not to exercise it only because it needs a new roof and windows replaced and everything else and I don't have the kind of capital to put into it. It's not it takes better. capital to do that. Uh, it depends upon what the future is going to be here for yeah. you. Uh, you need to cross the ball for that yeah, well, and how long it would take. Yeah, how long it would take, uh -huh. that's true. And yeah. I, I, we're involved with that in Pasco. Mm -hmm. uh, we have built several buildings there mm -hmm. and uh, I took a risk on all of them but they all worked out so far okay. but uh, you have some more land yes <laughs> more land to invest in yes that's great uh, just, sounds like you've um, done really well the life has been very good to my wife and I she I said I've always said that she was a dreamer mm -hmm. and by that I meant that she could see the possibilities of the property and she was a real estate sales lady. Oh, cool. She had a license to do that. And she's the one that got us involved in the land development mm -hmm. with another person. Mm -hmm. And it turned out very, very successful. Very good. And they're, we're so proud because there's over 500 people living there. Now. That's awesome. And it's and That's beautiful awesome. streets. They have everything on it. Doesn't it make you feel good to know that, that it's kind of like a, uh, it's a wonderful life story? Well, it is, and I'm proud of it, and that's why I talk about it. <laughs> that's cool. And we had a two and a quarter million dollar LID.
to put that thing in originally, and they were still going. And uh, it was fun. It wasn't work. It was fun. See, my work is fun to me. Yeah. You know, I love what I do, and it's fun to me. And I, you know, people think I work hard, and, and no, I'm like, eh, I don't day. work hard. I, play. I, I said that about my optometry. Uh -huh. I had a clinic in an association. We had three optometrists and ten employees uh -huh. over there in Pasco, and I went to office, my office. I played all day and got paid for it. I know. That's fun. It's just it's fantastic. Just fun. Yeah. I love helping people. When I was 65, I, I moved out because my hands were starting to shake, and even my son-in-law said when my hand held my hand up in front of the face, it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time for me to go. Time to, time to move out into new, that's new when horizons. My, that's when my wife's uh, dream came about, and she was a very important part of our team. Yeah. And so. Well, you have to be a team. Yeah. How long were you married? Fifty-six years. That's wonderful. We were married in 1944, and uh, we had uh, a wonderful marriage, and we have three kids, and this is the result of it. Result <laughs> well, of hey. Don't blame me. Crap. <laughs> Good <laughs> crap. <laughs> Anyway, did you did you belong to a church or anything like that? No, I'm not, I'm not a very religious individual, mm -hmm. but I have principles and way to live and the way to do things, mm -hmm. uh, which are close to uh, what very religious people. I keep talking to them. But uh, I'm not. When my wife died, she died alone with a family around, and we had a family. We had a family meeting the next day, and couldn't, almost all of the family were there mm -hmm. while she was there, and then she was cremated. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> that's what she wanted, and that's what we felt I should do. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but my answer is going to be scattered in the Wenatchee River. Ooh, cool. And then so they can... I really won't be washing it in that weather so for a demand. Dribble, so they dribble down past Pasco. Oh, I see. I see. You want to slowly go into the ground. That's cool. That's cool. Well, it sounds like the Lord has really blessed you over your years. And you, and you have principles and, and values that are really well needed this in this yeah. society. Yes. I agree with you, and I use that principle in my practice, and it's rather interesting. I practiced up country for 35 years. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate of the University of California at Berkeley. Oh no, that won't work. <laughs> no. Backlight. And, and, uh, Backlight over there. My principles were that you were there to help the client, mm -hmm. not to rip the bomb. Hey, Grandpa, step okay. this way. And I, there you go. I uh, can tell you an experiment, that, not an experiment, but a rule that I said, if anyone needed vision care and couldn't afford eyeglasses, they could get it in my office. Mm -hmm. And I had lots of people asking for free eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. But I had one rule. I had to come out and do some work first yeah. to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I was not going to give it to them. Mm -hmm. How many people took me up on my offer in 35 years? How about four or five? One. 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 Wow. And when they came out to my home to do the yard work and whatnot, the whole family showed up. That's cool. Yes. Well, but you ha and you have to teach people that. You have to teach work ethics or it well, doesn't work. Uh, and we would hire young, young ladies to clean our office, and I, my obligation was to teach them how to work. They would be. 14, 15 years old, we had to get permits from the state to do it, mm -hmm. and we did it. And my partner worked, his name was Elson, he was not Norwegian, but he, he was a big tall guy, and he did visual therapy, and we did things in vision that we never do today. We straightened oh, lost eyes, we taught the brain to use There's so many together. things that are not taught nowadays. It's not it's done just, today. Well, even in massage therapy, I had learned a lot of things from an old therapist, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia Palmgren. Mm -hmm. And um, and I do some things that she did because I was willing to listen and learn. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have a strap I use on my patients, and I help people like that. Ah, okay, but it's there are things that help people. And I'm a very successful person. I've been in business 13 years. Right. Where I've been doing massage, and I do six to eight clients a day. And and but the people, you know, I don't take insurances. I you know, I cash only. Mm -hmm. And but the people want me to work on them because I'm known in town as the best 
do tissue therapy. That's that can what help you me. want. If you do a good job, you'll never have to worry about clients. And I don't. Your clients I don't will advertise for you. Yeah. And my clients even support my man- my missions ministries too because they know what I do. Got to step in, Grandpa. Since you step out there, there's too much light against right. the wall. There you go. Yes, it's particular. Right. Well, hey, you, mess- <laughs> you know it's part of those values you're raising in particular. Yeah. It's part of well, I don't know where I develop these values, but I I've, I've learned that that's the, w- the only way you can be happy with yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a particularly religious man, mm-hmm. as you can understand <clears throat> by what I've done. Yeah, but I have those. I, I follow the Ten Commandments if you want to that rule. Mm-hmm. And it works. You sleep better, you're happier, you have a much better relationship, mm-hmm. and everything works great. Well, the Norwegians in general were very work hardy people. I'm from a Germanic descent, mm-hmm. too. We're workhorses. We, we, we are happier when we're working, and we're healthier when we're working, and we, we, you know, we have that kind of a work ethic, you know, you, you don't eat if you don't work, you know, and that's mm-hmm. just kind of the way you're raised. If you're in the Nord, Nordic area, you, if you wanted to eat, you better go milk the cow, go you know, and, mm-hmm. and milk the goats and oh, do yeah. what you needed yeah. to do, and, mm-hmm. and that's the kind of things that you taught your family, was that's the ancestry, is, is that Nordic, Nor- Norwegian ancestry is to teach well, your family. my parents certainly were that way. Mm-hmm. They worked, and my father worked all the time, mm-hmm. and my mother started land development when she was 46 years old at my so dad, right? She mm-hmm. worked too, and whenever something, someone would start quizzing her and she didn't know the answer, she'd break out like a Norwegian broke, so she didn't carry on the conversation very long. Well, you know what's really interesting is that that time in her life, most women weren't working like that. True. She worked. must have been quite an entrepreneur. She was. And we had, she had 10 acres to take care of. And, and that's exactly what she did. She took care of it. Uh-huh. And, uh, and she uh, lived in this house mm-hmm. uh, <coughs> when she was, she died when she was 86. And mm-hmm. she was about 85 when she was here. And we took her to Pasco. Oh, wow. And that's when she sold the house here. But uh, she was quite a gal. Quite a gal. Quite That's amazing. That's amazing. You have an amazing history. <laughs> an amazing history. Well, I'm glad your grandson's recording it. We, we've had a lot of fun doing it. Have you had a lot of fun doing it? And uh, I am a little disappointed that the time's coming when we can't do it anymore. A couple uh-huh. of years ago, I realized that when you're 82 or 83 years old, that you could be dead in two weeks. Mm regardless of whatever you did. So at that time, I had my daughter, his mother. Uh, I t- had her start taking over our project that we had. Mm-hmm. And now she's running it completely. Mm-hmm. And she do a better job than I ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, she must have been taught very well. She is a self-starter. Mm-hmm. And there, she didn't like education. I had a rule, I didn't think parents should have to send their kids to college. Mm-hmm. I had a rule in my family that I would finance any one of them if they wanted to go through college, providing they took uh, a full course and mm-hmm. got passing grades. Well, Betsy, his mother, went one year and didn't like the college. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't have college degrees. I had another daughter that was not college material. And then my son, uh, <coughs> he had the same arrangements, but he would, would uh, sign up for about 22 credits and then drop a majority of them <laughs> when it was within time to do that. So he didn't follow the rules either. Uh-huh. But he, we moved out on a river, we had a beautiful river site, a huge house out there, mm-hmm. and it needed roofing, so I taught him to roof that house. And he learned how to roof houses, and he, he worked his way through college at Washington State by roofing houses. Oh, wow. And today he has his degree and is working at Hanford, and, and uh, he works him, but he's not a self-starter, so he can't run my business. <laughs> <laughs> you need a self-starter to run a business. Yeah, really. I won't show him that part. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> it created a real problem. Mm-hmm. I have two active children. The third one's not active. And it was real difficult to tell your son that he wasn't going to have anything to do with the business. 
Well, but you know what? Um, that's okay because you have two people that are, and he is obviously successful enough well, to work a hand. He's work. involved in the business. He's got an equal share to all of us. Uh -huh. We've had lots of. But the running of it is not up to him. <laughs> Didn't mom own like fifty-one percent, and he owns like forty-nine, well, or something I along those lines. So she owned a little bit more. We have a rather comp. I don't know if you're interested in in what you do to make things legal and what and you cut down your IRS costs and all uh -huh. of that. But we've done it all. Oh wow. And so we have a corporation involved with a limited partnership. And he, my my daughter owns enough more to give her control of the uh, the corporation and the limited partnership. Oh wow. So that there wouldn't be a fight between two people right. later on. Yeah. And I had to do that to my son. From all I've been able to understand about it, nobody owns anything. <laughs> well, they don't. I don't even own the car I'm driving. Oh my, oh my. I don't own the house I'm living in. I rent. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, I understand. I do understand. Yeah, it's all legal. And uh, it's very good for a family, right? And yeah. I'm telling really? you in case you want well, to. Well, you know, what's really thing. interesting is I'm, I'm going to be looking for a five bedroom house because I have a girlfriend and I were two single moms and we were growing together. But I make more money than she does and she's on welfare and trying to get off. And so she's going to actually rent from Section me. Eight? Is she on Section 8? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't know. Do. We have 25 rooms. Oh well, yeah, she is on Section 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, where they're su su she subsidizes the rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. she's So for her to pay what I pay, which is $1,000 rent here, um, she just is overwhelmed because she's never paid more than $120 in her life. And it bothers and me a little bit on Section 8 because we rent our units for $700 a month. And uh, the section from the people that are renting from us pays 36 and then the housing authority pays about $670 some dollars. Well, she pays $1,000 a month, month for this? That's pretty yeah. good rent for this unit. I live in, I live in Puget Sound area, so this would be Four grand a month in West Seattle. <laughs> yeah, well, I, just can't. <laughs> I know. But just well, see, and I'm going. This is higher than my. This is richer than my bike because the utility bills is almost two hundred dollars a month because yeah. I have to pay monthly utility, and it's like yeah. I'm going. I've got to find another place. But you got to consider something before you make a move. Well, yeah, I remember now. I remember that apartment house across the street. From the okay, so this is the house on the corner of Okanagan and. Yeah, we'll just pull up. Find out. And the apartment building was there also at the time we owned it. Okanagan and Spokane Street. Spokane Street. That was awesome. Okay, so this is the corner of Okanagan and Post Spokane. And this is an apartment complex up here? Yes. And that was there at the same because my memory says at the same time this house was there. Okay, yeah. well let's cross this street. And we'll keep going this way. We're going to go this way. So this is apartment complex. Okanagan and Spokane. That's the house that my grandpa owned. I don't know how long he owned it. Okay. So this is the Columbia Elementary Cougars, which is placed on the practice field where he used to play football. Baseball. So you just practiced here, and it was a big field at the time. My school is gone. It's at the corner of Alaska and Franklin Avenue. Uh -huh. And we can keep going and turn gradually to the right, and and we'll see some older houses. Now these houses were there, I think, when my school was here, but. My school certainly is long gone. It includes my junior high school, which I attended also. And the area on our right is the area where the school was. And it's uh, full of modern apartment houses at the present time. Well, that's kind of disappointing to me, but I, <laughs> I certainly don't expect them to uh, keep the school, uh, an old high school, there for 150. City of Wenatchee Chase Park. I lived here 
when my father sold the Avalanche out on 9th Street. And remember, you just tell me. And he, he uh, bought this house and we moved here to live. And that was before my dad became ill. And we were to live here, and he had gotten rid of the Apple Ranch, which didn't really work very well for him, and because he never made any money. He had to hire all his help all the time, and he decided to give it up, and he bought this very, very nice home. And it had uh, three or four bedrooms in it, two of them upstairs, from, one for Marvin, one for me, and one for Elliot. What was, <clears throat> what was your neighbor kid's name? And my neighbor kid on the left, he had a house very similar to it, and his name was Raymond Bruland, B-R-U-L-A-N-D, and he lives in Texas at the present time. I guess I should call him and chat with him, but his bedroom was just opposite my bedroom, between the alley. This is this driveway, that was not an alley, but a driveway. And we used to throw things back and forth, and we would rig up uh, tin can telephones between us. And we had quite a bit of fun. You see that there looks like there's a shed built in the back, which we never had. But the house is very well constructed. Now, I might tell you one thing that's rather interesting about this house, to me anyway. Uh, many, many years ago, Pangborn uh, flew across the Atlantic Ocean all by himself. And he was trying to land in Salt Lake City, <clears throat> so to make his run longer, but Salt Lake City was fogged in and couldn't land there, so he flew back to Wenatchee, and when he was coming, we knew he was coming, and so I heard the airplane coming, and I was out in front, and the airplane came over, started to come over the house, I, I ran in the back, because I heard it there, by that time the airplane got here, and I ran around the house, and I never did see that airplane. So I went to uh, Pangborn Field in Lucroix. Here, he's talking to that. <laughs> All right. I went to Pangborn Field. You gotta point it at yourself. Well, I went to Pangborn Field over in uh, East Wenatchee, and he had landed, and he didn't have any landing gear because he, he dropped those in Japan to make it so he could fly across the ocean. So Pangburn was the first man to fly across the ocean, lone man to fly across the ocean nonstop, and he went from a big city in Japan to, to Wenatchee, Washington, and the reason he came here was that Pangborn had a brother whose name was Pangborn, and he was a Jew or optometrist just like my father. And of course, we knew them, we didn't know Pangborn, the aviator, but we did see his airplane, and unfortunately I didn't get to see it over our house because I was running from one end to the other, and it didn't work. But that's kind of an interesting story to tell about this house. And then my dad became sick, and when he became sick, it meant that uh, we had to do something a little bit different, and so we rented this house and moved to the house on Yakima Street. No, excuse me. We, we rented this house on Yakima Street and moved to the house on South Chelan Avenue, where we spent a considerable amount of today. And there he lived and died. And he died uh, May 29th, 1992. 1932, 1932 he died, and he was uh, 49 years old. Uh, he had a disease called pemphigus. I don't know if you want to know the details of it or not, but he was ill for five years, and uh, my mother took care of him all the time, and he was wrapped in bandages. So he didn't have a very nice life at the last, but he did die. Then things changed a lot for our family, and my mother then moved. We, in the meantime, had gotten that apple ranch back again, which we had sold, my father had sold on, on the crop payment. The man never raised any apples, so he never had any crop payment, so he could have kept the orchard forever. 
but my mother somehow or other talked him into uh, giving it back to us and we got the orchard back and we moved out to uh, 9th Street and probably the next stop that we have we will show you the house in which we moved. Now that particular house had three rooms in it. One bedroom, a living room, and another room that eventually became the kitchen. But when we moved in it, it had no bathroom, no kitchen. And you could see holes in the walls. And we bought a, a oil burner type of stove and put it in and heated the house with that. Let's talk about... We're standing in front of our house on 710 North uh, yeah, Yakima. Yakima. And we're facing Saddle Rock. And that's a configuration of rocky crags surrounding part of the western part of uh, Wenatchee. And I climbed up to Saddle Rock when I was a young fellow and full of interest. And there are several other rocks that have names there. One is Castle Rock and the other is um, Brustacombe Rock. Brustacombe, you can get a little view of that over here, but not much. Not very much, but anyway, they're still there, and they were there when I was a little kid. I think that's Roostercomb. Yeah, it looks like a rooster comb yeah. through the viewfinder here. <clears throat> I can't remember how difficult a job it was to climb up there, but I have a feeling we went around and came around the top. Well, I don't think we climbed up the cliff face. That was something that every kid in past, I mean, every kid in Wenatchee did when they were little. And I wouldn't doubt what well, they're still doing that. Anyway, <clears throat> these homes have been here for a long time and look like they're in pretty good condition today. And I'm proud of that. We didn't live here very long. When we left and went to uh, to uh, our house on uh, South Chelan, we rented this house to a judge. And they're rather interesting, I'm trying to recall his name, but he was a judge, a superior court judge in the state of Washington. And later on in my life, he came from came to Pasco and rented a house there and I don't think we rented to him at that time but he was there and uh, it's just one of those coincidences that happen in your lifetime it's rather strange that someone to rent my father's house and come to Pasco and live for a while but that's the way it goes <coughs> The Ray Brulin, who was our neighbor, I talked with him in Texas about a year ago, and I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he's the same age as I, so he might be dead by this time. Anyway, that uh, pretty well covers the Yakima Street. Okay. There's been a, a lot of changes in the school area, but not very much in this residential area, and it's pretty well kept. And it shows pride of ownership in practically every case of people living here, which is kind of nice again. Drawn to 1882, and Dad died in a very painful death. He had a disease called pemphitus, and I'm not going any further than that, except he was very, very painful for five years. Alongside of him to the left is my mother's grave, Bessie S. Nelson, and she was born in 1885 and died in 1972 when she was 86 years old. My father was about 49 years old, if I figured it out right. Now, nearby here is my brother's grave, and I should be able to find it. Memory kind of misleads a person to a certain extent because I didn't think that my mother's and father's graves were so close to the street and there were two trees uh, there at the time that they were buried and they probably were birch trees like the one that's here now but this one 
has been suffering from the birch bar and it's half dead. So the other one probably was dead quite a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, say that again. We're, Mark and I are standing by Elliot's tomb, tombstone and I said that he hasn't moved, he's still here. And uh, usually Elliot doesn't stay so long in one place, but it states that he was born in 1913, which is correct, and he died in 1976 in Wenatchee by himself. Uh, it wasn't necessary to tell the details, nothing bad about it, but he was living alone all by himself when he died. Okay, and <coughs> great grandma and grandpa are over there. And Yes, grab there over what used to be two trees. Right by that birch tree. And the birch tree is dying and the other one I think is... On the uh, other side of that big headstone? Yes. Okay. And uh, anyway, they're here now. I have another friend that's a friend, not a relative. He's very... I'm understood. about to run out of tape. And his name is Leonard Da. I think I'm going to take couple of minutes to try to find his gravestone. He and I started out in school together. We skipped fourth grade together, but really what happened was the third grade didn't have enough seats, so they took four of us and transferred us to the fourth grade. So I skipped the third grade. Anyway, we both did that, and that's about it. <laughs> and she would just sit down there a while, just hanging this. Finally, we start to get out, and then she'd go back up the. Oh, and she remembered that all the time. And she'd tell him. Yeah. She was, she was, what's she doing? She's taking a camera. Had one over from the school she borrowed. Anyway, our, our granddaughter was on this Ridge to River run. They have a. come off of. Mission Ridge, yeah. this downhill, and then a run, and then... Your grandfather? Well, I don't. I remember how we met our mother. Mm -hmm. Start out by introducing yourself, mother. though. Yeah, you're to introduce yourself first. Tell okay. me who you are. I am Norman Jensen, and I lived in Wenatchee for 85 years. I was born below Castle Rock. It's a small... Home. For orchard uh, workers now. For orchard workers now. And uh, I live on Washington Street, Washington and Western, which is now a development of about uh, of 16 acres. So I imagine there's about uh, how many homes? 30, how many? 40 and condominiums in there. And how did you meet my grandpa? We went to school with him. Went to school, school, and our mothers were both Danes. No, she was Norwegian, and her mother was Danish. And they, I don't know if it was in the church or where it was that they, they met. I don't remember that part. Of it. I don't either. Mm -hmm. That's probably true. But they. Oh, uh, oh they knew each other. Mm -hmm. I know. Pardon? The mothers knew each other. Yes. And uh, I can remember... <coughs> Norman and I played basketball and football together. I can remember that uh, Marvin's dad had a jewelry shop down on Wenatchee, Wenatchee Avenue. Avenue and next to the what is now the what? First National Bank well, or took, Bank of America. They tore, the, Pardon me? They, they tore away the uh, Whidbey Hadley building where my dad was and built this yeah. built this new bank building. So we were there taping while I talked and told mm -hmm. about that. And the Whidbey had this building. Uh, the Whidbey was a eye doctor. Mm -hmm. I can remember and going... There was a long stairway up to his place and my dad's jewelry store was right underneath that stairway and to the side of it. But I can remember I Marvin you, Woody Robbins, and, and uh, uh, oh, you're fine, there. you're fine. Important part of this and Elliot, we went up Navarra Cooley to the Honda Chelan, 
Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> we went out of a, a bearing on a Model T. We did? And we stopped <laughs> at that old mill <laughs> and put shims on that bearing and used the oil out of an old motor that was being used. I don't remember that. Yeah, it was because <laughs> we went on up to my brother's cabin and he was at Lake Chelan. We stopped and stayed there for hey, lunch. Hey, trying to take a picture. Hold your hands. No, down. you're supposed to look over that way. No, no, oh. you talk to each other. I'm doing just fine. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can remember that. I don't remember well. that. Yeah, but, well, I think Woody Robbins would remember it. No, I remember Woody with a lot of things we did together. Yeah. And I'm going to have to call that guy. Yeah, yeah he's a. Um, uh, well, I think the reunions are over, Marvin, don't you? Uh, class reunions? Yeah. Yes. I I have to admit, I did something that I shouldn't have done on that class reunion. My son took a whole bunch of pictures, and they all turned out real good. And when he got them, and I developed them in one set, I said, man, I got more than I can handle now. Yeah. And it would cost me a... 750 bucks to <laughs> I wouldn't even so think about I it. just kept them. Yeah, I, I feel would guilty, too. but I did. Oh, they good. were good pictures. Well, it's good. Well, I don't know why you feel guilty about that. After well, all, I don't know you took them. Well, I, I didn't. Do. My son took them. Yeah. I know, but, but after all, you you were the one that yeah. wanted it, had it developed and everything. Yeah. I sure wouldn't feel guilty. No. Well, yeah, I, I do. do. But I, I don't know some much. things you do. Four years old, I ran in front of a car here, and the car ran over me and broke my leg. And when I was living in, uh, when I was home, laying in bed with a cast on my leg, about six weeks in bed in those days, I, uh, <coughs> my man that ran over me brought me flowers, and I got mad at him because he brought me flowers. My uncle Ed, as I called him, his name was Albert. He was in the grocery business and he delivered groceries to people in those days. Uh, he brought me candy every day and I thought he would be very proud of I have been in contact with the relief family. Maybe my uncle Ed ran that grocery store and he had quite a personality and he had quite a business. And he got tired of being in the street. Now start. This is the street that my mother had to install water lines coming from Miller Street. This is up 9th Street to our property. And the man that owned this house on the left uh, also cooperated because he had some houses to sell. So she and he put in used wooden water pipe. Stop now because you're at our property. Used so wooden? Property. No, we're not, we're not part of that property yet. Yes, used wooden water pipe, <coughs> and it was about four inches in diameter. This is Ringo Street, and, and uh, so about from here on is our property that used to be our property. This is all part of the old apple orchard? Yes, on the left. I think that's where it is. <laughs> Things have changed a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm a little insecure about where this is. I think I think maybe it started here. It started here. It started here at this church? Yeah, at Morris Street. Well, yes, at the church, because my mother sold the property to that church, and they put up the church, and that was the first property that she sold. They put up that church. It's like a Spanish-speaking church. Yeah, I don't know. It's been there a long, long, long time. <coughs> long before the Spanish people ever arrived here. But it's probably all Spanish people now. Okay. 
doesn't look like the way I remember it. Well, well, those pine trees right there <clears throat> would have had to have been there. One would think so, but as I remember it all, this was apple orchard. Well, these trees might not have, well, that one may have been. These smaller ones might not have been. This was, uh, everything was apple orchards here to start out with. That one house straight ahead of us was there, but the other one wasn't. The one right at the end of the street was yes, there? that was there. And I used to walk to another school, Springwater School, right where that, at that corner ahead of us. I would cut through the orchards over to Springwater, and it's about a half mile to a mile walk through the orchard, and I had a pathway that I followed. And that was when I was older and went to a higher grade school. But before high school? Yes, that was a grade school. Okay. Is that everything from here? Yeah, I'm going to have to go a little bit of it. There's a Nelson Avenue sign right there. Yeah. Nelson Avenue. So this would be Nelson Avenue, yeah. and we'll uh, let's go up and get Elliot out. Let's well, let's uh, right. cruise down the Nelson Avenue dead end. This is a house my mother built, frame built, and this is the house we lived in, and this is the one where I built the addition on it so we could have the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll we'll stop back there, and on, it's a dead end here, so we'll come back and maybe walk around it. She built this house, frame house. I don't think she built this one. It's the same type of house. I think she built this one also, but I think the rest of them she did not build, but she sold the property. Well. <coughs> And uh, this is that uh, A.Z. Wells building. Apparently it's campfire now. A.Z. Wells. Yes, he had the Wells and Wade, uh, Wells and Wade hardware store. It was a big, big hardware store at the time. This was a hardware store? No, no. Uh, he owned the hardware store in Wenatchee, and he was the wealthiest man in the little area. So this was his house? This was his house, and I, and we used to have a pear orchard around this, including here. He never had all this parking area because it's campfires have it now. I don't but, think he'd need this much parking area if it was his no, house. No, I used to play around out here, and he had a lot of peacocks, <coughs> and I used to have fun with the peacocks. Now, our property, our orchard, went up this way, and somewhere on the corner, we might probably walk up that street because somewhere on the other side of that building is where that swimming pool was. We are, this is on Sunday, we are standing behind. Just tell me about it again. Right, we're standing behind a big house that was built by A.Z. Wells who owned the Wells and Wade uh, hardware store which was a very large hardware store in Wenatchee, very successful and the man was relatively uh, rich and he had five acres of lawn in, between this house and <coughs> Fifth Street. Fifth and Street is up which Fifth direction? Fifth Street is, is west of here. Okay, up that way. Tour. And uh, today the area has taken a lot more space and the, it's now used by the Columbia, no, by the uh, Campfire. Wenatchee. Uh, junior college and that's by the letters on this former home of Mr. Wells it says campfire on it but the, the campus this is part of the campus of the Wenatchee Valley College and it's quite a large campus and the college is very successful and it <clears throat> probably will not be able to see the home where I spent my childhood because it isn't there anymore, but we're going to walk to there and see if, what we can find. I haven't. Somewhere about in here, in there, was where our home was. And we were uh, higher than the rest of the orchard. And that's uh, made it a little nice to work because you look over the orchard instead of instead of uh, looking at it. And these trees were not here when I was a youngster. I don't think you're recording. No, I'm not. Sorry about that. It's okay.
Well, this I'm standing where somewhere where our swimming pool used to be, and this area is higher than the rest of the area where our orchard was. And our house was somewhere in this area also. And we had a driveway to uh, Nelson Avenue, no, to uh, 9th Street. And I can, from this area, I can see cars driving on 9th Street. So this is approximately where the house was. But it's entirely changed now. This is, this is, has uh, buildings, school buildings built on it. That's just about where it was. In fact, it's 9th Street. I think it is 9th Street. And uh, 9th Street has been changed also. But anyway, this is about where it was. And all these trees have been planted since I was here because we had apple trees in the surrounding area. And um, that's about what I can talk about at the present time until the... Des describe your swimming pool and how it worked. All right. Uh, the, the swimming pool had, had uh, ordinary three-foot foundation on it with, uh, to hold it, hold the house. At first it was a house. About, um, as I remember, it was about a three-room house with a upstairs in it. And it wasn't too large, but uh, my cousin lived, and her mother and father lived in it. And her mother was my mother's sister. And her name was, um, I forgot what her name was, that's terrible. Anyway, <coughs> they lived here and her husband worked in the orchards. Generally, he worked as a, a supervisor of a large orchard. Uh, and that was his profession. Um, but for some reason or other, my father decided to move the house to the corner of what is now Nelson and 9th Street, and he cut the house in sections and moved it in sections. That left the foundation. And so my father said to me, if I could get some of my childhood friends to dig out the hole, he would pour concrete inside that foundation and we, could, we and would make a swimming pool from there. So that's what he did and all my friends, including Norman Jensen, came and dug it out with shovels. How deep was it? Well, it was about six foot deep. And uh, there was a ledge on the inside because it had to pour more concrete and that meant that there had to be a ledge, so that didn't bother us anything. We'd just stand on that ledge and have fun. And the water, we used irrigation water, but the source of the water came to our orchard just about somewhere in this area where we are now. So by gravity flow, we would run that uh, irrigation water into the swimming pool. And then when we wanted to drain the swimming pool or clean it, we would open the drain cock and that would run into our irrigation pipes watering the orchard. So we didn't waste any water. However, yesterday I was talking to Norman and he commented that they had to change the water quite often because there was usually a foot of mud in the bottom of the, of the swimming pool, which came from the irrigation water which we used. And no chlorine, no nothing. We just swam in that in that thing and we had we had more fun and it entertained all the kids in the, in the neighborhood for a couple miles around because they all had to walk there and of course no one ever worried about liability didn't worry about kids falling in and drowning which is what we worry today and didn't wasn't required to have a six or eight foot solid fence around it like it's today. We didn't have any of those regulations. Consequently, the kids, had, all of us had a lot of fun in that swimming pool. It was 28 feet long by maybe 18 feet wide or something like that. Wow. And uh, it was long enough that you could go swimming in it. And we had a diving board that we made, I think. But anyhow, we kids had a lot of fun. How long was that pool here? Well, now, that was here 
uh, I think my father sold that section of the land. I, I can't tell you the exact date when it was, but the house was uh, there for a while, and then, then the school district bought the adjoining area, which is about 40 or 50 acres, and they included the house area. And that's, so this little section right here, as you can see that fence, that's the end of the private property, and the school had purchased the part that we're standing on from the part over there from whomever purchased it from my father. And that I can't recall. I was too young a fellow to think about all those things. <laughs> Uh, and when that happens, the house disappeared, and these buildings came in. And we're going to walk around a little bit further here to get to what was the front of the house, and we probably will see uh, 9th Street in that condition again. The, the house, where our house was, is over further where you see that fresh lumber built. This thing tied onto it, it was in that area. Where was that? About that far from the road. So, uh, hard to actually remember it all. And our swimming pool was, now as I look at it, it was probably underneath that building. But it's hard to, it was a long, long time ago. And we were standing back over there. Yeah, but it's in general, that's where it was. Uh, I'm a little curious. I would like to go see what's happened to Elliot Avenue. This little jog was named when my mother platted this property. She had the right to name that street because it was a new street and never been named it. So she named it Elliot after my older brother. And right now it goes uh, various places throughout the city of uh, Wenatchee and it's considered a long, a long street, but it, it isn't continuous. Well, it's, it's a, it doesn't have to be exact. But this looks like the maintenance shop for the, for the junior college. They have Elliot, and you see that window, the high window is where the kitchen is now, and I, I was working for Montgomery Ward at that time, and they shipped, uh, this, I should be recording all this stuff, I suppose. Press the red button, there you go. We're standing, looking at the house on Nelson and 9th Street, the house in which I lived when I went to high school, and then with my mother it was after my Dad had passed away, and we had moved out here from Chelan Street and took over the operation of the orchard, which was here. And my mother, we didn't make, we made $150 profit on uh, three years' time, and with us doing all the work, my mother decided that that wasn't feasible, so she... Uh, arranged to have a bulldozer come up come in and push over all the trees and so they were all laying there 10 acres of them and that winter i spent the whole winter cutting the trees into eight foot lengths and cleaning up the brush and burning it and we gave the roots away to a plumber no one else would take it and that was during wpa work and no one would work unless they they were on WPA and got paid for it, but this plumber wasn't on WPA or anything. And he came out and cleaned out all the roots and the stumps for nothing. And you can imagine what a job that was, but he did it anyway. What did he do it for? For the wood. Oh. Uh, he got the stumps and the roots and all went along with it. He did a beautiful job. <clears throat> and I uh, had to admire him. He had a, about a two-acre place and it was completely full of applewood stumps and roots, and he eventually sold it all. 
where the WPA people were sitting across the street looking at him work, but they weren't working. It kind of had an effect on my personality and my ideology very early in life. I didn't <coughs> think very much of somebody that wouldn't work when they could get money from the government. And that was a long time ago. And I uh, never wanted to donate or give anything to anyone anymore unless they worked for it. And then, I, then they weren't being donated, they were earning it. It, it affected <coughs> my personality a little bit. But now I'm off, <laughs> off the subject. Anyway, on this house, this is the house that was transferred from the original large house, and it was the house that was on top of what became the swimming pool. And one little extension that you see here uh, is, was built by me and my brother, and another part of it, uh, and it showed, there's a sloping part that slopes down to the ground, and I built stairways there and dug out a basement underneath that area. And you're now looking at a window, and that Elliot and I used for a bedroom. And we built that on also. This one right here? No, the one to the small the, one down there. Small one to the right. Okay. That's a bedroom. And it had two beds in it, and we used it. <laughs> and if you will examine the roof line a little bit, there's a jog in it up there. It shows what kind of carpenters we were. We didn't quite get it straight. But anyhow, uh, this house has been recited and maintained quite well uh, since we were there and there's a new uh, rear door also but we in the process we ended up putting uh, uh, a stove and a chimney and a hot water tank which uh, had oils in the stove and that's how we heated our water uh, until we had the shower put in, we used to take a bath in the kitchen. And, uh, and down in the basement, I put retaining walls in by taking big rocks and plastering them in place. And it's still there, I think. Anyway, it's been there a long time and uh, very functional. And it's providing a home for someone. And that's what we're after. <coughs> but it originally started out above the swimming pool. And uh, this street was also put in at the same time, and I can't remember when it was blacktop. In fact, it was long after uh, I was gone with the blacktop. But this is a rec recognized city, Wenatchee City Street. Now they don't, uh, it doesn't uh, correspond or abide by all the rules of streets, so that's probably why you don't see sidewalks and. Uh, and curves in gutters. Yeah. Tell us about the houses out here. Uh, most of these, not most of them, but the house across the street that, that you're looking at now was built by my mother and she built that one completely and rented it. And some of the other ones, like the one that you're now looking at, the gray one, was a shell house. And she built just the outside walls and the foundation and never completed anything on the inside and she did several of those and sold them immediately because uh, people could move into them and live and that's what they saw when they bought the property and so they moved in without sinks or running water or any toilets or anything like that and they put those in themselves and so eventually my mother sold all the property and that's how you see the development this year <coughs> and and this occurred, I was living here when I was going to high school, and I remember I had a couple dates with a, a lady and uh, a young uh, student, and somehow or other she wanted to check out to see what kind of uh, house or home or how, what kind of a guy I was. She came out one time and checked out where I was living, and I never did see her again after that. <laughs> no more dates, nothing. <laughs> well. That's the way the ball bounces. <laughs> I thought that was rather interesting to have something like that happen. But that is part of life. <laughs> I don't know where that lady is now, but I hope she's doing well. Um, what else? There?
gradually my mother sold all this property, but we did move after we got this pretty well. My mother had gotten this pretty well taken care of. She and I was working for Montgomery Ward and uh, they used to <coughs> ship their uh, refrigerators in thin veneer boxes and I used that veneer to build the shelves and the doors in this house. And I'm sure they're not there anymore because that's pretty poor shelving but it was functional. Uh, <coughs> but uh, then I got a job with the Shell Oil Company and they started transferring me out of town and my mother was left here alone and that's when she moved back to Chelan Street which she had owned all this time and had been renting it. So then our mode of living shifted from here to Chelan Street and my mother had quite a few real estate contracts from this and received payments for quite a number of years uh, from this property. Uh, that pretty much in short story is covers uh, the, what happened out here and uh, when my my dad apparently well I'm getting a little confused on this we my dad died down Chelan Street and then my mother moved back out here and worked with this property and then she moved back to Chelan Street and that's better but that's a little confusing now I'm telling you two stories but uh, my dad died when we lived on Chelan Street and then my mother moved back out here again <coughs> and uh, then I guess she moved back to Chelan Street again <laughs> I, that sounds confusing yeah, if you own all the property you can move into any one of them you want to well she yeah, I think that's the way it was and then when my dad died, uh, my mother continued to live in Chelan Street and I had left home and I was with the Shell Oil Company and I'd been transferred to Pasco in 1938. 30, yeah, 1938. And from there I went to school I came back and I liked Pasco so I opened my office in Pasco and when, when my mother got older, she had me purchase a home on Yakima Street in Wenatchee, and she paid me rent so I could make the payments on the house, and which she had loaned the money to me. And it's a business proposition, but it worked very nicely for income tax purposes, and it was legal. <clears throat> so she lived in that home until she died. And my brother, after she died, <coughs> my brother returned to Wenatchee and he lived in an apartment on Okanagan Street, close to Aranda Street in Wenatchee, and he died in that apartment house. So that pretty much finished the Nelson family, except I was still living in Pasco. And by that time, I had been married to Edna quite a long while. Anyway, that pretty much takes care of what my mother was doing and how she did it. It's a little confusing that I've talked about it, but that's pretty much what the story was.
does, it doesn't appear to be anyone home. So. It's a business expense. You see, we use that to take pictures of our <coughs> units inside and out before we rent them. And that's why it's a business expense. Oh, good. All right. Well, still need you to introduce you everyone. Have to all that trouble to build all those houses so you could have a business expense for a camera? <laughs> well, we also, I don't own my car. <laughs> and this is a business trip over here. Well, good. And so we, it just pays all your expenses legally, you see. Yeah. And we're